I, I waited for my mom to come back from work and when she arrived, I was like, mom, mom, I figured out something at school today. And she was like, oh, you know, she got excited because like that would be the first time I like was excited about school ever, right? And she's like, oh, wow, you know, what did you figure out, honey? And I'm like, mom, mom, I learned about dimensions today at school and they're wrong. <laughs> There's a, you know, the look of despair in an Italian mother, you know, there's a force there that hasn't been calculated in physics yet. <laughs> and so I'm like, wow, mom, you know, I think that you're made out of dots that are made out of smaller dots that are made out of smaller dots to infinity. Mom, you're infinite dots. And she looked at me and she said, oh my God, if you answer that at school, at the exam, you're never going to pass. <laughs> and she said, you know what, I just worked for eight hours. I really don't feel infinite right now. <laughs> and you, she made a point, you know, pun attended. Uh, <laughs> if you... If you have finite systems, how are they infinite? Like if, you know, if you have finite boundaries, how is this boundary and this, and my boundary delimited and seems independent if there, everything is embedded to every, I mean, it would be just a big mush. How do you get definition of structures in an infinite continuum? The two don't seem to agree. And, you know, I had to think about it. I went back to my room and I was like, oh, how do I deal with finite boundaries? And I, it took me some 15 years of thinking. Um, again, I, at the time I didn't know that I was traveling with some of the biggest problem we have today in physics, right? In current physics today, we have this huge chasm between Einstein field equation and relativistic equation and, and, um, and quantum theory. So Einstein field equation tells us about the big stuff, like stars, galaxies, planets, you know, suns and all this stuff. And it predicts a continuum, a smooth structure, a continuum towards infinity, towards singularity. And then we have quantum theory which predict and that which deals with atoms and subatomic particles and it doesn't agree with relativistic equation it predicts finite bounded states right quantum numbers linear functions and those two don't agree so we have physics that describe the big stuff and we have physics that describe the small stuff and it doesn't agree. Why is that a problem? Well, <coughs> the big stuff is made out of small stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so there must be a physics that link the two. I mean, obviously there's got to be some way to make it work. Einstein knew that, and so after he wrote Relativity, although he was initiator of quantum theory, he really didn't like that theory at all, and he continued to work on finding a unified view of physics till the end of his life. Einstein didn't have all the modern mathematical tools we have and all the observations we've done since then, because he would have solved it. <laughs>